in our service of Book of Common Prayer, Holy Communion, with a special prayer. A special prayer for a world in distress. Creator God, at this time of uncertainty and turmoil, as we fight to combat a terrible plague, we bring before you all the peoples of our world. Whatever their race, their colour, their class, their creed, their sexual orientation, or anything else, we are all your precious children. At creation, you gave humanity a part of yourself, a soul, and with it the ability to create. And we ask, Father, that the abilities you gave us may be directed to working together to fight this virus through medicine and science, and by us joining together and working to help all those who are vulnerable in our society. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Amen. The summary of the law. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There are no other commandments greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. The Collect for the Sovereign Almighty God, whose kingdom is everlasting and power infinite, have mercy upon the whole church. And so rule the heart of thy chosen servant Elizabeth, our Queen, and Governor, that she, knowing whose minister that she is, may above all things seek thy honour and glory, and that we and all her subjects, duly considering whose authority she hath, may faithfully serve, honour, and humbly obey her, in thee and for thee, according to thy blessed word and ordinance, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost liveth and reigneth, ever one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The Collect for the First Sunday After Trinity. O God, the strength of all them that put their trust in thee, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without thee, grant us the help of thy grace, that in the keeping of thy commandments we may please thee both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the second book of Samuel. Mephibosheth, son of Jonathan, son of Saul, came to David and fell on his face and did obeisance. David said, Mephibosheth, he answered, I am your servant. 
David said to him, Do not be afraid, for I will show you the kindness of the sake of your father Jonathan. I will restore to you all the land of your grandfather Saul, and you yourself shall eat at my table always. He did obeisance and said, What is your servant that you should look upon a dead dog such as I am? Then the king summoned Saul's servant Zebra and said to him, All that belonged to Saul and to all his house I have given to your master's grandson. You and your sons and your servants shall till the land for him and shall bring in the produce so that your master's grandson may eat the food and may have food to eat. <coughs> but your master's grandson, Mehiboshet, shall always eat at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then Ziba said to the king, According to all that, my lord, the king commands his servants, so your servants will do. Mephibosheth ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth had a young son whose name was Michael. And all who lived in Ziba's house became Mephibosheth's servants. Mephibosheth lived in Jerusalem, for he always ate at the king's table. Now he was lame in both his feet. It ends the first reading. The epistle is taken from 1 John chapter 4. God is love. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. God's love is revealed to among us in this way. God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. And this is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. But this we know, that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his Spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as Saviour of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in Him, abide in love, abide in God, and God abides in them. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment, and whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We love because he first loved us. Those who say, I love God and hate their brothers or sisters are liars, for those who do not love a brother or a sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. The commandments we have from him, command we have from him is this, those who love God must love their brothers and sisters also. He ends the epistle. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. The rich man and Lazarus. There was a rich man who was dressed in purple and fine linen, and who feasted sumptuously every day. And at his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus, covered with sores, who longed to satisfy of hunger with what fell from the rich man's table. Even the dogs would come and lick his sores. The poor man died and was carried away by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades, where he was being tormented, he looked up and saw Abraham far away with Lazarus by his side. He called out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus to dip 
the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am agony with these in these flames. But Abraham said, Child, remember that during your lifetime you received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner evil things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. Besides all this, between you and us a great chasm has been fixed, so that those who might want to pass from here to you cannot do so, and no one can cross from there to us. He said, Then, Father, I beg you, send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers, that he may warn them, so that they will not also come into this place of torment. Abraham said, they have Moses and the prophets. They should listen to them. He said, No, Father, Abraham, but if someone comes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be convinced, even if somebody raised, rises from the dead. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. <clears throat> I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, he suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sit upon the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins and I hope for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. A very short sermon. I'm not going to talk about Lazarus um, and Abraham and the gap between them because that's for the 10 o'clock Eucharist. I'm going to look at our epistle from James very briefly. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. And that is very, very important. It's not, as we've said before, the wishy-washy television rubbish of love. It's the great love that God has for us and we ought to have for Him. In that He created us. He didn't wash His hands of us like Pontius Pilate. He gave up his son for us. And he gave up his son upon the cross in love that we might be redeemed. We stiff-necked people. We who go our own way at every opportunity. God so loved the world, we know it well. And he did so love the world that he gave up a part of himself he came down at the Incarnation as a baby, whether it was in a manger or a stable or whatever. He came down to earth. He experienced life as a human being. He knew all the pitfalls. He ate, he drank, he washed his hands, he went to the loo. Jesus was a man, but he was also divine and in his divinity he gave us such love that you can't actually express it in human words 
As a man, he held out his hands to all of us as God. He gathers us in if we want to come in. Every one of us has a part of God within him. I said so in that special prayer that we had this morning. At creation, you gave humanity a part of yourself, a soul. So we need to awaken the soul that is within us, for the Spirit of God is in each human being, whoever they are. God has no preferences, we're all the same. And that is where the word love comes in. We love our brothers and our sisters, all of them, black, white, yellow, it doesn't matter. God is love, and all who love God love us all. Amen. Let your light so shine before men, they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. There will be the usual two Eucharists on Wednesday and Friday. And as from Monday, the church will be open for private prayer and it will be this in this lady chapel only. And we would ask people to maintain social distancing and obey all the, the rules that we've had to set down. So that is from tomorrow. But next Sunday is St. John's Sunday because our paternal festival is but a short few days away from Sunday. The 24th is the birth of John the Baptist. So next Sunday we will celebrate St. John's Sunday, 8 o'clock communion, and then the High Mass, the paternal Mass of John the Baptist at 10 o'clock. It'll be me only, I'm afraid. But I have asked for advice as to how we might make it a little bit um, more noteworthy. And I've asked our organist to give it his consideration. So that is for next Sunday. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church Militant here on earth. Almighty and ever living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men. We humbly beseech thee most mercifully accept our arms and oblations, and to receive these our prayers, which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love, we beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes, and governors, and especially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly, quietly, and truthfully governed, 
and grant unto her whole counsel and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and impartially minister justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and living word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to those who are watching this uh, service of Holy Communion, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate, in a moment of quiet, let us bring before Almighty God our own concerns, our worries, our thoughts for the world. Remember those we have loved and seen no more. We think of those we know who are sick. charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways. Draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith down unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul says, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John says, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sin. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, 
we go to magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Amen. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who with thy tender mercy to give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one revelation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, revelation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and in institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O most merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receive in these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it. And gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for thee, preserve thy body and soul unto everlasting life. Take and eat this in remembrance that Christ died for thee, and feed on him in thy heart by faith with thanksgiving. On your behalf, I take the sacrament. Christ, which was shed for thee, preserve thy body and soul into everlasting life. Bring this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for thee, and be thankful. As our Saviour Christ hath commanded us and taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Everlasting God, we thank Thee that Thou dost nourish us with these heavenly gifts. 
by his sacrament strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In thanksgiving we say, Almighty and ever living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost stand safe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual fruit of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, and thus assure us whereby thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also ours through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who with thee and the Holy Ghost art most be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love and care for this day and unto eternity. Amen.